Good morning, my name is Matt, and today we are in our Bible Everyday reading from John chapter 20, the penultimate chapter of this uh, Bible book in the New Testament. And uh, yesterday we uh, looked a little bit at uh, some of uh, the, the incredible uh, prophetic fulfillments um, in the, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And uh, kind of connected in, in some way really is about who, who do we say Jesus is. And uh, this particular passage in John chapter 20 includes the encounter that Jesus has with Thomas. We often refer to him uh, as Doubting Thomas, um, because this is the guy who was uh, having some battles, some internal battles, a bit of a struggle, trying to work out for himself, is this really Jesus? Is he really alive? Has he really and truly resurrected? And that is a question that all of us, all of us, if we are saying that we are following Jesus, all of us have to come to some kind of conclusion about it. Uh, he says this, Thomas says, look, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. So Thomas here is after some hard evidence. He's after some, some real facts. Anyway, Jesus turns up, doesn't turn up in a normal way, just floats through the wall, according to scripture. That's how it seems anyway. And uh, although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood amongst them. And then he said to Thomas, hey, put your finger here. It was just as if Jesus knew exactly what Thomas was demanding. Funny that. And he says, see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Uh, I want you to know that it's okay to have doubts. It is. Uh, doubt and unbelief are two separate things. And I'll just try to help us uh, explain that in a moment. And uh, I once heard someone uh, describe to me what doubt was, and I found this incredibly helpful. The person said to me that doubt, imagine doubt as being the workshop where, where faith is forged. And just think about that for a second. Uh, it's a place where there is activity, where there is uh, study, uh, there, is, um, there, is, there is work, uh, there is a, a, like a, uh, an energy put towards looking at facts and trying to understand something. Now that is totally different to unbelief. Unbelief is where you just say, no, don't believe it. I'm blocking that out of my mind. It's not true. And I'm not even going to bother looking into it. Whereas doubt says something different. Doubt says, help me, help me with my unbelief. Help me to understand. Let me discover. Let me try to work these things out for myself. Now, I think that um, it's worth also saying that um, that whilst doubt um, and unbelief are two separate things, um, all doubts, this is Tim Keller, it says this, however sceptical and cynical they may seem, are really a set of alternate beliefs. In other words, uh, you can't doubt belief A except from a position of faith in belief B. Uh, for example, if you doubt Christianity because... There just can't be one true religion. You must recognise that this statement is in itself an act of belief. Understand that? Uh, if you went to the Middle East, for example, and you said there just can't be one true religion, nearly everyone would say, why not? The reasons you doubt Christianity's belief A is because you hold unprovable belief B. So every doubt, therefore, is based on a, on a leap of faith. And when you look at scripture and how it unfolds and, and, and some of the, the evidence that scripture provides. It says here in, in, uh, in um, Fillmore's fantastic straight to the heart uh, commentaries, it says the Romans tried to ignore the empty tomb, but doubt quickly exposes their story as unbelief. 
If the soldiers had been asleep on their watch, Roman law would have demanded that they pay with it, with their lives. But the governor let them walk free. So there's something odd going on there. And then the Jews tried to deny the resurrection, but doubt very quickly exposes their unbelief too. How could the disciples have stolen the body from a sealed tomb under Roman guard? And doubt also exposes speculation that the tomb was never empty at all. The Jews and the Romans didn't even try to deny that Jesus' body was missing because they knew it was gone. If our doubting, okay, let, let's face it, we all have doubts, that's okay. If our doubting, we, if we come back to the powerful conclusion that Jesus did indeed come back to life, our lives can never be the same again, can they? Um, I want you to, to know that this moment in history, uh, this um, question that is being presented to you even this morning is, who is Jesus? Uh, you, you need to know that this is a life-changing set of beliefs. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he came as a man, he died a, a, a criminal's death, and God raised him back to life, if you believe that stuff, then your life is changed forever. You, you can not do the the half in, half out thing. We cannot pick and choose from scripture, the bits we like, the bits we don't like. No, our lives can never be the same again. Doubt is, is not uh, stubborn unbelief. Just want you to be clear about that this morning as you go into your day. Um, whatever you're making of, of this passage in this particular um, piece of narrative where, where Thomas wants to find out the evidence. This is not Thomas uh, being unbelieving. Uh, this, is, this is Thomas wanting to believe. This is Thomas desiring uh, to be free from doubt. And I wonder if that's where you're at today. Maybe it is. Let me pray for you. Lord, I want to thank you, God, that uh, we have your word at our fingertips. Thank you, God, for uh, just the, the wonderful evidence uh, that Jesus is God. He is who he said he was, and that is who he is, even today. Lord, and we look at scripture and we say, please, God, would you help us with any any whiff of unbelief? Well, I pray that you would come and soothe our doubts, uh, Lord. And, uh, and as we find ourselves growing in faith uh, for who you say you are, Lord, we, we know that the implications for our lives are just just gargantuan lord and we we want to be those that uh, that take uh, that your call on our lives seriously lord so i pray for for any doubts lord to to be gone today lord and uh, and the, and and this faith that grows to have its effect on how we how we do our jobs today how we raise our families how we relate to those that we love our friends our family uh, what we do with our money what we do with our resources lord i pray god that we would be Jesus followers uh, without any shadow of a doubt, knowing that you are the king of our lives. Amen. Amen. See you tomorrow.